Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. While there was another video that provided an overview of pedigrees and their conventions, this one will focus on how to interpret the information in different types of pedigrees and relate probability involving Punnett squares. The pedigree on this slide exhibits a recessive disorder. Individual Roman numeral 3-3 is homozygous recessive and individual Roman numeral 2-5 is a carrier for this trait. This video will provide you with the ability to determine this sort of information. With a large enough pedigree for a simple, that is a single gene trait, you can apply knowledge of Punnett squares and probability to determine what pattern of inheritance a trait shows. I could determine that the pedigree on this slide is recessive, for example, and tell you the genotypes of half the individuals in this family. There are three types of pedigrees that we'll be discussing in this video and identifying in class. The three types are listed here and explained through the upcoming slides. Autosomal dominant, that is, dominant traits that are located on any chromosome except for the X and Y, is the first type. Autosomal recessive, traits that are recessive and located on any chromosome other than the sex chromosomes, are the second. And finally, you'll learn how to identify recessive traits that are located on the X chromosome. Autosomal dominant traits, such as Huntington's disease or hypocholesterolemia, genetic high cholesterol, show up in individuals that have one copy of the dominant allele. If you have even one form of this gene, you would have that particular trait or disorder. Since you can't be a carrier for an autosomal dominant trait, that is, if you have one allele, you have the trait, these traits can't skip generations. All of the individuals that are unshaded would be homozygous recessive for this trait, using that same logic. When trying to learn information using pedigrees, keep in mind that all you can do is disprove certain possibilities. Just because the example on the right could be autosomal dominant doesn't mean that it couldn't be autosomal recessive. Examples of autosomal recessive disorders would include Tay-Sachs disease, sickle cell anemia, and cystic fibrosis. There are some basic guidelines when trying to identify autosomal recessive trait pedigrees, just like those that are autosomal dominant. First, these traits can, but don't have to, skip generations, as shown in the picture to the right. Roman numeral 1, 2 has the trait. Neither Roman numeral 2, 1 or 2, 2 do, but one of their children, Roman numeral 3, 2 does. In order to show an autosomal recessive disorder, you must have two recessive alleles because if there were one dominant allele, it would cover up the recessive trait. With this knowledge, you can determine that all shaded individuals must be homozygous recessive. Another piece of information that can be useful when evaluating recessive pedigrees is that every parent must either be a carrier for this recessive trait or have it in order to pass it on to their children. X-linked recessive traits, such as male pattern baldness and red-green colorblindness, exhibit many similarities, yet some significant differences, to autosomal recessive traits, just described. Since these traits are recessive, it is possible for them to skip generations. Just like autosomal recessive traits, described in the previous slide, that doesn't mean that they have to. The primary difference between autosomal and X-linked recessive traits involves the fact that males only have one X chromosome. As a result, it is much more common for males to have these characteristics than females. This fact is demonstrated in the pedigree on this slide. Only males, the squares, show this particular trait. Because of how X-linked recessive traits work, there are some specific things that you can do to identify them in pedigrees. Since males receive their only X chromosome from their mother, if a son's mother has an X-linked trait, her son would always get it. If a male has one copy of an X-linked trait, he would show that trait since he only has one X chromosome. Since a father only passes on his X chromosome to his daughter, a father must have an X-linked trait in order for his daughter to have it. All of these rules to sort out what type of pedigree that you're looking at can be a little bit confusing. What's important to recognize is that the rules of probability, the content covered with Punnett squares, apply to pedigrees. When in doubt, either write out or run Punnett squares through your head to determine what you can learn from a certain section of a pedigree. Write out genotypes below individuals as you work to make sense of things. It's time to run through some examples involving Punnett squares and pedigrees. The first example question asks, if this pedigree exhibits Huntington's disease, an autosomal dominant trait, what is the genotype of Roman numeral 2-3? Step number one, identify who you're talking about. 
Highlighted now is Roman numeral 2-3. This is an autosomal dominant trait, and he doesn't have it. That leaves only one possibility, and that is that he's homozygous recessive. Lowercase g, lowercase g would work as an answer. The second question to do with Huntington's disease asks, what is the genotype of Roman numeral 3-1? Again, identify who you're talking about first. Roman numeral 3-1 has this dominant trait, so she must have at least one capital letter, one dominant allele. Since her mother, Roman numeral 2-2, didn't have this trait, she must have been homozygous recessive. Filling out a Punnett square in your head or doing one on paper leaves only one possibility, and that is that she must be heterozygous or have the genotype capital G lowercase g. The third question in this set asks if Roman numeral 1 1 is homozygous dominant or heterozygous for this particular trait. After identifying who you're talking about, highlighted here, the first step I'd take is to look at his children. If he were homozygous dominant, he could only pass on the dominant alleles to his children. If that were the case, every one of his children would be expected to have this particular disorder. Two of his children, Roman numerals 2, 3, and 2, 6, don't have this particular trait, so it's safe to assume that this individual is heterozygous for the trait. The second set of example problems states, if this pedigree exhibits Tay-Sachs disease, an autosomal recessive disorder, what is the genotype of Roman numeral 2-3? Identify Roman numeral 2-3 on this pedigree. Individual 2-3 has this particular recessive disorder. The only way that you can have a recessive disorder is if you are homozygous recessive for it, lowercase h, lowercase h, for example. The second part of this set asks, what is the genotype of Roman numeral 2-1? After identifying this individual, look at his parents or his children to determine the answer. Since his mother had the recessive trait, she must have passed on a recessive allele to him. He would be heterozygous for this trait since his mother gave him an allele, yet he doesn't show the trait himself. You could have come to the same conclusion by looking at his children and determining that both he and his wife must be able to pass on a recessive allele in order for their children to have the recessive trait, as indicated by Roman numerals 3-1 and 3-3. The final question asks, what is the probability that Roman numerals 2-1 and 2-2 would have a fifth child with this disorder? Identify the individuals in question. Looking at these individuals, parents, or children, as we did in the last portion of this problem, you can figure out their genotypes. Once you've done that, you can cross the two individuals using a Punnett square to determine the probability that their next child would have a recessive disorder like Tay-Sachs disease. In the last problem, we stated that both of these parents must be heterozygous. The reasoning is that neither of them have this recessive disorder, but their children are able to get it. If you cross two heterozygous individuals for a given trait, there is a 25% chance that a child would end up with a recessive disorder. That is, that they would be homozygous recessive. The final set of questions all have to do with X-linked recessive traits. The scenario reads, if this pedigree exhibits red-green colorblindness and X-linked recessive disorder, what would the genotype of Roman numeral 3-2 be? Now that we're looking at the same individual, we can try to figure this problem out. For X-linked problems, it's important to note that the sex of the individual in question is important. Roman numeral 3-2 is a male that has this particular disorder. Males only have one X chromosome, and their other sex chromosome is a Y. As a result, Roman numeral 3-2 would have the genotype X lowercase by, as shown in red here, since he shows this particular recessive disorder. The second part of this problem reads, what is the genotype of Roman numeral 2-2? Now that we've identified the individual, a female, we can use the rest of the pedigree to determine her genotype. She doesn't have the disorder, so that eliminates the possibility of being homozygous recessive. The question that remains then, is she heterozygous or homozygous dominant for this trait? Since her father had the trait, since her son has the trait, she must have received and be able to pass on the recessive allele. Her genotype must be X capital B, X lowercase b, and she is a carrier for this trait. The final question involving this pedigree asks, could Roman numeral 2, 1 and Roman numeral 2, 2 have a daughter with this particular disorder? After identifying the individuals in question for this pedigree, we need to refer back to the questions earlier, where we determined that Roman numeral 2, 2's genotype 
was x capital B, x lowercase b. The last thing we need to work through this problem is to determine the genotype of Roman numeral 2-1. Since he's a male, he only has one X chromosome. And since he doesn't have this particular disorder, he must have a single copy of the dominant form of this gene. Filling out a Punnett square for this problem would help to solve it. I have placed the mother's genotype that we just described on top, and the father's genotype that was mentioned on the previous slide on the left-hand side. I took the liberty to fill out this Punnett square. The top two Punnett squares highlighted here would be females. They possess two X chromosomes apiece. In order for a female to have an X-linked recessive trait, you would have to have two recessive alleles. Both females have at least one capital letter, one dominant allele. To answer this question then, no. Roman numeral 2-1 and Roman numeral 2-2 could not have a daughter with this colorblindness. Sometimes, instead of being given the type of inheritance for a particular problem, you'll be asked to find it yourself. This question asks, what type of inheritance is shown in this pedigree? To recall the earlier slides, you've got three options. Autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, or X-linked recessive. And again, the idea is to eliminate options and not to jump to a conclusion right away. To rule out dominant traits, an easy rule to look at or a question to ask is, does this trait skip a generation? In this case, yes, it skips a generation in the encircled section. Roman numeral 3-1 and Roman numeral 3-3 both have a particular trait, but neither of their parents do. As a result, you can rule out an autosomal dominant disorder. Two options remain. Is this an autosomal recessive or an X-linked recessive pedigree? One of the rules I suggested regarding X-linked traits said that any female that possesses one would always, that is 100% of the time, pass it on to her sons. As you can see in the box section of this pedigree, there is a circumstance, just one circumstance, in which a mother with this trait had a son without it. As a result, this could not be an X-linked recessive disorder. If you were to look at all the rules for an autosomal recessive pedigree, you'd find that this one would fit the bill. This is an autosomal recessive pedigree. That is the end of this video explaining how to answer questions involving pedigrees. If you're interested in learning about any other concepts related to genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.